Hello, Paul. Good, uh, good afternoon, uh, Theo. Can you hear me okay? Yes, now I can hear you. How are you doing? Doing well. Doing very well, thank you. Doing very well. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So just uh, one phrase from me uh, to our audience. Tomorrow it's the big day. It's the, the fifth episode of the Market Talks series we're going to have here. It's a privilege and honor, to be honest, to host Mr. John Bollinger, one of the biggest names in trading industry. I don't know if you agree with me, Paul. Yep. Uh, so uh, I had a call yesterday with John and what he's planning to go through and explaining to you guys, it's really no brainer. I mean, it's uh, something you really don't want to miss. I will just uh, send the link here on the chat. Please make sure you register and you book that time in your calendar tomorrow just for one hour. And I'm sure your trading most likely won't be the same um, and, and the way you would like to trade from now on. <clears throat> so uh, that's all from me. Paul, you can try to share your screen if you want. Okay, awesome. awesome. Yep. Excellent, excellent, great. Well, uh, else? I will. Uh, I'll crack on, Theo. Thank you so much. Good luck. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Theo. Thanks, Dave. Good. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, great to see you all here. Welcome to our next uh, Wednesday price action session. Uh, and today we're going to talk a little bit of uh, something um, not necessarily directly related to, to price action, but it is directly related to your journey as a uh, as a trader. Uh, and it's something that uh, lots of uh, um, lots of traders are sort of interested in. Lots of traders, you know, are sort of kind of curious about and lots of traders want to know how to do better. So uh, we're going to be touching on that. Um, great to see so many of you here. Raquel, nice to see you back here. Okay, hope you're uh, hope you're all well. Um, as always, I do appreciate that, uh, you know, we have a, we have a truly global audience who join us for our sessions and uh, wherever you are in the world, it's it's, uh, it's great to have you here. We are admirals here all. Uh, hope you're having a great year and enjoying these uh, eventful markets. Uh, and as I always say, I appreciate that we do have a, a wide range of experience uh, for traders who join us from complete beginners to, to those who've been trading for a good while. So hopefully there'll be something here for everybody that you can take away, something that you can learn about. Even if it's not something you're using today, uh, it'll be something that you will uh, need in your uh, in your journey eventually. So uh, remember, here we are, Admirals, a uh, FX and CFD broker with uh, global presence and local support, uh, licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most popular trading products and giving the opportunity to engage with markets, uh, utilizing both the MT4 and MT5 platform. If you have any questions about Admirals, please get in touch with your account representative and they'll be very happy to help guide you. So uh, what should we talk about today? Well, yes, we are uh, on our uh, price action series. But as I said, today's today's event isn't really uh, uh, necessarily directly related to price action. But as always, I will just go through our first few slides just to remind people of what we're looking to uh, to do and what you should be doing in terms of your routine. But what we want to talk today is about position size, all right, and how to increase it. Uh, what are the mistakes that new traders make? Okay, and I'm, I'm fortunate to have had lots of experience, um, you know, coaching traders, working on trading floors, uh, presenting at conferences, etc. You know, and speaking to traders and about their their own journeys. And so we'll talk about you know what do traders need to be aware of when increasing position size. Uh, and then, as always, if there is time at the end, we'll have a little look at the live uh, at the live markets. So um, plenty for us to talk about, plenty for us to cover, and uh, you know, I'm going to give uh, my take. Okay, my take on um, why position sizing is, uh, you know, why position size is so important. Uh, what are the challenges that traders actually have with that, uh, and, and what what are you know one of the possible ways that you can uh, sort of you know get around helping yourself with that. Um, it'd be interesting to know of those of you joining us here today live, okay, for the session. Um, what's your own experience in terms of increasing position size? Is it something that you have tried? Is it something you've done? Uh, 
have you maybe done the opposite and decreased position size? That's that's a distinct possibility as well. It would be interesting to know um, what your own experience has been, whether it be whether it be challenging or good. Okay. Um, as I always say, there's no there's no judgment here from myself. All right, you know, we're all traders. We're all on a journey. We're all at different stages of that journey, uh, and we can always all learn from each other. All right, and I think that um, I think that helps everybody. So, if you have any of your own particular thoughts or comments in terms on uh, um, on uh, on um, uh, you know, on, on increasing position size, then it would be great to hear it. So, um, Khalib says, uh, hello, I'm from uh, Ethiopia. Nice to see you. Um, I hope I've pronounced that right, Khalib. Um, it, you're very welcome. As I said, it's great to have a truly global audience here joining us for our uh, sessions. I think it's um, fantastic. Everybody can bring something to the uh, to the event. Uh, so uh, it, it's uh, you're very welcome here, Khalib. And, and as I say, wherever you are in the world joining us, whether you're joining us here for the live session or watching it later on demand, you're all very welcome. It's great. Great to, to have you all here. So um, for those of you who don't know me, still don't know me, uh, my name's Paul, traded for many years, okay? I've uh, traded for funds, traded for clients, and uh, uh, primarily I like to focus on trading FX indices and commodities. Uh, whilst I have traded also other asset classes, but those are the ones I, you know, I, I focus on, those are the ones that have always been uh, about me and, and FX in particular. Um, for my longer term trading, for swing and position trades, I, I like to be a kind of a swing trader. And for intraday trading, I tend to be a, a reversal trader. So uh, I bring all of that experience to us during this during you know, this price action series and other elements. Okay, so um, um, you know I've uh, I've probably coached and educated hundreds, maybe thousands of traders over the years, uh, and so I, of course I get to see uh, you know that kind of interaction with other traders and some of that experience that I'll be sharing today in terms of you know what what traders are doing when it comes to sort of you know um, uh, increasing their position size. So, uh, you know, if you are completely new to trading, completely new to the series, the uh, the price action guide is, as the name implies, all right, it is a uh, it's a, a, a kind of webinar series we've been running, which has been about trying to help new traders in particular just prevent themselves from becoming overwhelmed, all right? I appreciate that, you know, you go onto the internet these days, there is a wealth of information out there, and some of it can be quite count contradictory at times, okay, and leave you a little feeling a little bit confused. The price action guide has always been about, you know, let's strip it back, let's just focus on just understanding a little bit about what price action is, of understanding some candlesticks and the, the relationship that they can have and, and utilize that to be able to analyze and engage with markets. And if you are absolutely brand new, price action is, as the name implies, all right, it's just a very simple means of market analysis uh, where we are studying the, the movement of price over the uh, over time on our uh, charts. Uh, and it still remains popular with both retail and institutional traders. Uh, and the reason this is, it's like it's like learning the language. You know, I, I say this every week. It's like learning the language of the uh, of the market. OK, and like learning any new language, you know, it can be a bit challenging at first. It, there's lots of stumbling blocks. It can be a bit frustrating at times. But the more you do it, the more you practice it, the the quicker it becomes for you to, to for it to click for you and for you to be able to understand it. And and this reading price action is in many ways just another, it's another form of language. Okay. Or it might even be, you know, like like reading a sheet of music. Okay, you know, you could you could also use that analogy, um, and so as I say, it's um, it's worth it's worth persevering with. It's worth being able to to understand it because once you are, well, then it's a great bedrock for you. Okay, for for any other type of trading, is a it's a fabulous uh, bedrock to have in your sort of trading knowledge and experience. Uh, and I think it's fair to say, you know, we have covered an awful lot in this particular guide, all right? And uh, I say it every week, um, I try to do a bit of the hard skills and the soft skills a little bit like today. Hard skills being the ones that new traders are always excited about, okay? You know, where to buy, where to sell, what are the particular setups, things like engulfing candles, key reversals, inside bars, pin bars, et cetera, star formations. Um, and then on the soft skills, all right, the bits that new traders at the beginning of the journey may not recognize the value of all right but i assure you the longer you trade the the more you will actually recognize and value that those soft skills because that is what will determine the trajectory and the longevity of your uh, trading career and so that's why we've talked about things like you know getting yourself preparing having the importance of things like routines okay of having checklists of grading your trades of reviewing your trades etc 
all of this uh, helps there. And, and one of those soft skills, I would still call it a soft skill, is about you know how to increase position size. What is it that you need to be aware of when you are coming to 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 do that? So, lots on there. And, uh, and what's all the better for you is that each session has been recorded, and you will find each session on the Admiral's YouTube channel. So if you go there, look at the training spotlight, you will see that all of these sessions are here. So if you're just joining us now, they are all there. You can watch them to your heart's content. Or if there's elements you think you need to go over again, just to, you know, just to cement your learning, by all means go in there, sort of, you know, help yourself to them and you'll be absolutely, uh, you know, absolutely fine and dandy. So remember I was talking about, you know, soft skills. One of them is having a good routine. And uh, we've talked about as having 10 steps and the, the first five which is what i wanted everybody new traders sort of just almost like you know become almost like an automatic reaction all right whenever you open a chart whenever you open a chart whether it be gold whether it be bitcoin whether it be euro it doesn't matter all right first thing you should be doing is you know defining levels of support and resistance go to the monthly chart down to the weekly chart down to the daily chart start drawing in those particular um levels step two is to find if there is a trend, remember markets only trend 20 to 30 percent of the time. Uh, I think last week we did a session on range bound markets. All right, so markets only trending 20 percent, 20 to 30 percent of the time. A lot of the time they are either consolidating or they are transitioning, okay, out of one trend into another. What we want to do is, well, if there is a trend, well, you know, what we're looking to do is, as be as trend traders, we are looking to have opportunities to buy at support in an uptrend and, and sell at resistance, okay, in a downtrend. So it's important for us to step two, define if there's a trend, and step three, see how price reacts at those key support and resistance levels. That's what we're interested in. And in particular, we're looking for step four, which is for some price action triggers at those particular levels. So that might be the things like pin bars, engulfing candles, inside bars, key reversal candles, star formations. All right. You know, those are just, you know, five, you know, five setups, you know, almost like, you know, a, a clip, five, you know, five, um, five different types of uh, bullets, five different types of arrows that you can, uh, that you can fire into the market. All right. But it's about recognizing having them. But equally, you know, step five, you just want to also just take a moment to recognize you know, is the price action part of a bigger chart pattern? Maybe it's a continuation pattern. Maybe it's a reversal pattern. Because sometimes, you know, new traders they you know they 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 hyper focus on that that pin bar or that engulfing candle, and, and they're unable to see the wood for the trees. It's important just to step back and just look: is it part of a bigger chart pattern, which might also be able to be traded um, as well. So those are the first five steps. We'll come on to the uh, the second five, okay, as we go uh, a few weeks into our uh, a few more weeks into our sessions. But you know, this is that's not perfection. But if you're establishing that as a framework and as a routine, you're starting to do the right things every time, and that's that's what we want. Okay, that's what we want to see. Uh, and in terms of the instruments that we have been looking to focus on during a session, well. Uh, not unsurprisingly, a lot of that reflects my own particular experience. Um, so there's an awful lot of FX pairs, the, the, the dollar index, uh, and then invariably the sort of the major and minor crosses that's there. And there's about 28 of them. Look at the big global indices. So the big American uh, indices, okay, like the SP 500, the Dow, the NASDAQ, but then some of the European and some of the other global indices. Some of the big major commodities, so things like oil, gold, silver. Some of the uh, big equities okay i know some people love trading the uh, the us tech stocks uh, and i appreciate some people like to trade crypto so that is quite a large basket to begin with all right and i do appreciate that it's an awful lot of big basket to to continue but what you generally tend to find is you know sort of you know you'll start with that kind of big basket that sort of breadth of instruments to look at but as you get a little bit of experience as you get a little bit of feedback as you start to analyze your results what we'll probably find is you'll probably over time start to focus down there on up to about six instruments right you know you'll find some traders between about two to six instruments are what they really particularly like to focus on but you know, we start here, we start wide, and then, as I said, we just start to, to focus in based upon, you know, um, based upon you know, quite a few reasons as to why we choose our own preferred particular uh, um, uh, instruments. Excuse me. So, you know, that's as always our, you know, kind of a standard introduction. You know, we want to get those routines in places. We want to be make sure we're doing the right thing week after week. 
but of course we want to focus on our main element for today which is about talking about how to increase um position size so i mean as i was saying uh, earlier okay it's um you know asking questions earlier It'd be interesting to know what if any experience people here today have had in increasing their position size is it something that you've tried is it something that you're a little bit reluctant to do maybe you're a bit fearful of doing is it something that you know you have tried and it went well or if you have tried and it was a bit challenging okay it's always interesting to know what other experiences uh, traders have but you know uh, you know and, and this is you know a, you know a personal um you know, a personal commentary, okay, from, you know, from working with hundreds, maybe thousands of traders over the years is that, you know, many private traders, many retail traders, they, you know, they, they find themselves in, in a challenging position of, you know, struggling to grow their trading accounts to a size that is, that is meaningful, meaning that, you know, that they can basically make a transition towards full-time trading. What that can lead to is that can quite often lead to frustration, all right, which in turn can sometimes, not all the time, but can sometimes lead to sometimes a bit of desperate behavior on the behalf of some traders. And that rarely ends well. And I'll explain what I mean by that later on, okay, in this particular session. What we'll do instead is we'll discuss ways that traders can build their accounts by increasing position size and, and what is it that you need to be aware of what is it that you know you you need to take on board before you engage in such activity but firstly let's let's frame some of those challenges that private traders experience because i'm hoping that you know i will share some of those um, challenges and, and maybe some of them will resonate with you and you know maybe it'll make you realize that you're not unique you know if you've had a challenging time of your trading you're not unique it's not you know unusual everybody has to go through as part of their journey uh, and there's ways and means that you can actually you know work around that so um one of the challenges that i see very often with many private traders is that they they are undercapitalized for their particular goals okay you know and 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 understanding goals and understanding what success for you is as a trader is unbelievably important right unbelievably important and it and it's almost like a, an exercise you should be looking to doing every six months of your trading journey just understanding what you know what uh, what success means for you as a as a as a trader it can be quite an interesting conversation something maybe we'll we'll uh, focus on in a in a future session but the general rule is most private traders have small trading accounts all right uh, and they've got small trading accounts as well as trying to hold down you know other responsibilities you know maybe a job maybe running business having a family maybe caring for uh, parents etc lots of other responsibilities and so it you know that it it does not allow them to achieve the the goals that they were maybe setting for themselves as a trader you know they find it a little bit a little bit challenging all right because uh, because of that so you know i see that challenge an awful lot with with a lot of um, with a lot of uh, you know private retail traders and the question goes well you know, how does that manifest itself in uh, traders' behavior? Uh, you know, and uh, you know, we'll come on to that in a moment. Uh, you know, one of the other things that has changed in the last few years is, of course, is the let's say a change in regulations, especially here, especially here in in UK and Europe, but but also uh, I would suggest globally, uh, you know, more and more, is that, you know, there was uh, ESMA rule changes back in around about 2017, 2018, uh, and that actually played a huge role in basically changing the changing the landscape, I would suggest, for uh, for private traders, and in many cases, frightening away traders because they, you know, they realized that perhaps they may not be able to trade in the way that they had wished to beforehand. What I would suggest is that those changes should not really have had any real major impact upon solid educated traders who were already doing a good job of managing risk okay you know and, and we'll come on to that in a in a moment's time but it does have an impact on how much capital you would hold in an account and most traders would you know generally have to hold more uh, of their capital more of their funds in their accounts to be able to trade at the size they had done previously and that just reinforced that challenge number one of namely you know traders being a little bit undercapitalized their, their accounts being a little bit too small in relation to the goals all right uh, and the sort of let's say the successes and um, success points and objectives that had that they had set for themselves um, and as I said, what that tends to happen is then is, you know, what we see is in terms of how it manifests in behavior is that we start to see, you know, some traders start to, you know, 
uh, looking to sort of chase the money, okay, which uh, is um, being perhaps a little bit flippant there in the, the way I do it. But, you know, it's a, um, it's just a, you know, a good way to, to simply describe it, okay, in that traders, you know, uh, get a little bit frustrated, okay, because they're not making the progress that they would like. They can still be making really good progress, but compared to the sort of maybe the the the, the goals or the objectives that they've set themselves, it leads to a bit of frustration. And that means that it can lead to effectively sometimes traders sort of just trying to chase the money, which which rarely ends well, ladies and gentlemen. OK, rarely ends well. Uh, and that then leads itself into behavior number two, which I see in a lot of traders, is that that kind of chase the money means that traders feel like they Hit, need to hit a you know a, a walk off home run okay with every trade that they uh, that they that they take and uh, I appreciate that it's a bit of an American sports term baseball term okay if you're if you're a cricket fan you know you could be hitting a six or you know if you're uh, you know a uh, uh, you know, if you're a football fan, you know, it's like you winning the FA Cup final with every, every now and in terms of every game. You know, it, it, what it is, is it invariably, it makes traders feel that they, you know, they, they just basically need to, to really sort of, uh, you know, chase the money. They need to basically make huge, big winning trades with every trade. And, and that's simply not the reality. Okay. That's simply not the reality, but that kind of, that need to hit a walk off home run, all right, to, to, to prove to themselves, to be able to help build their account and achieve their goals. You know, that is, you know, it's a lot of self pressure to put on the shoulder uh, and it generally sort of tends to not uh, sort of lead to terribly good um, uh, you know, experiences. All right. And in fact, actually that's, um, <clears throat> that's me walking my talk. Okay. I have the ability to hit walk off home runs. All right. And um, I would play, uh, version of baseball um so you know as a pitcher in baseball you know you would see it and I, and i see it in um i would see it in traders okay they they need to feel the need to hit a home run every time they step up to the plate every time they look to take a trade rather than recognizing that actually in, in using that kind of baseball sports analogy you know you can do very well from just from just hitting base hits okay you don't need to you don't need to actually swing for the uh, swing for the uh, branches every time okay but i don't think we need to see paul's video there today but um what it does is you know that it leads on to other behavior that doesn't help and behavior point number three is that what we see is traders sort of you know they, they end up chasing the next best thing all right they end up switching trade strategies after every couple of trades uh you know and i see traders in that effort to chase success they end up chasing the tail in terms of you know changing the strategy changing the tactics every three to four trades chasing the the latest trading fad okay you know and and you know i you know i've been trading long enough to see that there is always the sort of kind of the the latest trading fad all right and i you know I'm, i don't need to mention the the names here okay i'm sure if you open up the uh, if you open up social media if you open up on it up uh, the internet you'll see lots of Adverts, lots of uh, pieces, okay, by people who are effectively offering the the latest trading fad, you know. And the reality is, there's nothing new under the sun, all right. Lots of the, the lots of those kind of let's say those latest trading fads, you know, they are variations on a theme. They might be just using different. Um, different words okay you know different um uh you know different explanations for for the kind of the same concept or I see traders trying to curve fit their strategies all right they're just constantly trying to tweak to perfection so that the strategy of theirs you know is you know always always winning well always you know always delivering home runs and the reality is you can do that okay in back testing you can do that in demo but you know trading live markets is a different experience so you know this is what i say you know traders just chasing the next best thing switching the trade strategies that rarely ends well okay that's that rarely ends well and 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 everybody does it you know at the beginning of my career i did it i did it the same okay you know everybody does it because you're you know you're just wanting to sort of you know you're wanting to achieve your goals you're wanting to you know, you've got a bit of competitive drive you you know you want to sort of you know have objectives and goals and a vision that you're working towards and moving towards uh, and when you're not achieving that you know, frustrations that can set in for many traders. And so, you know, we do things like chasing the next best thing as a way of thinking that that will help take us to where we want to go. Uh, and the other side of that is behavior point number four is that actually, you know, traders become so overwhelmed, they become so overwhelmed from trying to chase money or, you know, changing the strategies and tactics is that they end up actually doing nothing. 
they become so overwhelmed, they start to suffer from analysis paralysis. And uh, like the you know, proverbial deer in the headlights, you know, they just they just basically do nothing, okay, because the the traders are overwhelmed, all right? They dreaded analysis paralysis. Uh, and so I see that. You know, I see this a lot in you know, in, in private traders. Okay. You know, I hear from them, they speak to me, I'm, you know, talk to them at conferences and events and such, you know, there's a lot of the, the, the commentary and feedback that I get. And uh, it'd be interesting to know, you know, it just having gone through that from those of you here today, you know, which ones of you have, you know, would, you know, would any of those points particularly resonate with, you know, have you sort of seen any of those and thought, yes, you know, I have been guilty of that or yep, I can see how people can do that. As I say, you know, it's, um, there's never any, you know, there's never any, uh, never any judgment. It's, it's more a case of just raising people's self awareness. That is, that it's part of your journey as a trader. You know, this, this, these elements will happen, and it's how you respond to that is actually what will help you in terms of, you know, your uh, the sort of let's say the trajectory of your trading journey and the longevity of it, which is, um, which is what we're uh, what we're particularly looking for. So. What we see are, you know, the, the challenges and the behaviors. So, you know, as I said, in terms of challenges, lots of traders are undercapitalized. Lots of traders have been, let's say, their trading styles have been choked by uh, regulations. And then you add that to what lots of new traders have is that, namely, they are they are underskilled, okay, in the terms of their trading skills, uh, and yet they are overconfident. They are they are fueled by optimism bias, all right? One of the heuristics, they're fueled by optimism bias, uh, and they have very poorly managed expectations, all right? You know, they, they, they you know, they're, they're, uh, their, as I said, their goals, their uh, objectives, their definitions of success, you know, are, are wholly out of whack, okay, with where they are in terms of on their journey and in terms of their particular skill set as a trader. And, and it is that divergence between the sort of, you know, expectations and reality, but that's where we start to see challenges happen. Now, you know, it's in that gap that actually, you know, the sort of the challenges uh, arise. And so, as I said, we see some of the behaviors like traders feeling like they need to sort of chase money. You know, they chase markets, okay? You know, they will chase moves in markets. They feel that they need to win big on every single one of their trades, okay? Each trade needs to be like a home run, okay? You know, a big home run. Uh, and invariably, you know, they, uh, they, you know, they end up chasing their tail in terms of just changing strategy, changing tactics, changing what they're doing, you know, trading, you know, almost like every day, every week, sometimes every month, all right, in an effort to, to a sort of chase success. Uh, and that can actually after a while just lead to analysis paralysis because they just know so much, have so much going on that they actually just don't know exactly what to do. And things like that, they, that's what leads to things like impulsive trading, helps contributes to things like revenge trading. Okay. They are, you know, they are particular topics of their own, of their own. So, you know, as I said, these are some of the challenges I see, okay, from, you know, dealing with traders for years all over the world and some of the behaviors that I see those challenges manifest. As I said, it'd be interesting to know if those of you here who are, uh, you know, who who, uh, who is uh, strong enough and brave enough to add up to, to admit to seeing that, um, having seen or experienced some of those uh, challenges and elements themselves. You know, as I said, uh, when I first started, you know, um, I, I did a little bit of chasing my tail, okay, because you're always thinking, well, what, you know, what's the next best strategy? What's the next best strategy? What's the next best strategy, okay? And, you know, and of course, you go onto internet forums or onto that, and there's, of course, people doing all sorts. And as I said, it becomes easy to sort of just basically start chasing the money, chasing your tail, and it just doesn't really take you anywhere. And, and actually, what we've always talked about here, okay, myself and, you know, my colleagues is that, you know, just having um, – some very simple skill sets, okay? Some, you know, being well-educated in your trading, managing risk, uh, and then invariably just looking to sort of evolve as a trader, just slowly but surely, just look to get better, trade after trade after trade after trade. That's what we're, that's what we're particularly aiming towards. So um, if those are the, the challenges and the behaviors, well, you know, how do, how do we overcome them? Okay, what can we do to help ourselves? Well, you know, what what could be our solutions, right? It's all it's all well and good to talk about the challenges people have, but actually, you know, we want we want you know solutions, don't we? We want ways and means to to help ourselves. So uh, one of them is increasing our position size on our uh, trading. 
Uh, one of them is about building a position. And uh, building a position, by my definition, is different from increasing position size, all right? So um, when I talk about building a position, what I talk about is, you know, um, is when I have my uh, initial trade, and then what I do is I look to add, okay? I look to add to that trade, okay? So as the trade goes in my direction, I will look to add to that trade. And, you know, a collection of, you know, the initial trade and the add-ons, to me, that is a position, okay? I have built a position. Whereas increasing position size is about invariably the sort of, you know, the um, uh, the, the capital risk, the financial risk that I have uh, my exposure to as I, uh, as I trade. Uh, and then the final possible way to, to overcome those challenges is, is what I would define as running your trades. And what I mean by that is that, you know, invariably um, being able to, you know, as the old trading adage goes of cutting your losses and riding your winners. Part of that is of riding your winners is about running your trades. And what I mean by that is that there will be a couple of occasions every month, okay, where your analysis will uh, um, uh, your analysis will identify possible opportunities that you know the the next day or two might actually the you know the that particular instrument or market that you focus on there may be the opportunity for you know what might be just a couple of days of a a short uh, of a short run it may not be necessarily a big major trend it just might be a trend for a couple of days uh, and it's about well how do we how do we you know uh, allow ourselves to run those trades okay how do we instead of instead of maybe just you know utilizing a small simple target of two to one how can we actually go about basically running our trades? So um, I would see those as three ways that we can overcome those, those challenges that we talked about earlier in the, uh, in the session. Uh, and of course, today, what we'll talk about is we'll focus on increasing position size. Uh, but, you know, as always, a little bit of a quick reminder of position size and risk management, why it's important. Um, if you want more in depth, I think we can go back to, I think it's session seven, session seven, where we started to focus, did specific sessions on risk management i'm not going to go through all of that today right but you know i would hope that most people recognize that you know managing risk is unbelievably important you know you if you're not managing risk well it doesn't really matter about increasing position size or building positions or running trades because if you're not managing risk first and foremost yeah you're going to have a bit of a you're, you're going to have a bit of a challenge so remember you know you, you are a trader, right? It, it is your job to take risks. That's you know, as part of the job as a trader. Therefore, it is your job to manage risk. And the better you become at managing risk, the quicker your progression will be towards becoming a successful trader, all right? And I, I, I cannot stress that enough, all right? You know, risk management is your first and uh, first and foremost priority, okay? Every every single day that you are uh, that you're engaged with uh, markets. And, you know, as a, as a very brief reminder, okay, what we've always talked about is regardless of what instruments you trade, all right? And, and I don't mind if where you focus, you know, your trading, whether, you know, as I said, you want to trade the euro or gold, all right, or Apple or copper or Bitcoin, okay, or the Dow, all right. Whatever instrument you choose to trade, whatever time frame you actually look to focus on, because price action can work as well on the monthly chart as it can on the one minute chart or whatever vehicle you use. And by vehicle, I mean, you know, what actual sort of trading vehicle. So whether it be something like, you know, an FX trade or whether it's a cfd a contracts for difference or perhaps it's a you know spread bet if you're operating in the uk you always follow very very simple rule okay in terms of our risk management you never risk more than one percent on any trade and you never ever trade without a stop loss those are the two things that you always include in in everything okay so uh, Raquel says, uh, I, I tried it before. Uh, I look at account size, lot size, understand margin, set loss per day risk, uh, and the number of possible trades that I can comfortably enter. Yep, that's a very good start, Raquel. A very good start, okay? That's um, that's really, uh, that's good behavior, okay? That's good practice to to, to basically uh, focus on. And, uh, you know, they, they should be, they should also be almost like, the, you know, the automatic way you operate every day when you're, uh, when you're starting out on your trading journey. But if you're, completely new to trading hey you're completely trying to just understand risk management well you know if you just you never ever risk more than one percent on a trade uh, you never ever trade without stop loss if you do those two things okay what that will allow you to do is it will allow you to live to fight another day 
All right. If you have a challenging day in the market because maybe the market didn't go the way you wanted, or maybe the, it did, and then there was a change because of a geopolitical event that carried on in the world, okay, or a, you know, Trump tweets something, you know, and the market's just, you know, U turn, etc. Okay, that is why we have those kind of very two simple rules that you do there just to in order to to. to to basically make sure that you are managing risk first and foremost, okay? Because if you're not doing that, well, then looking at increasing your position sizes, it, you know, it's, it's, it's pointless. So, you know, if we've been doing all of that, okay, uh, you know, uh, what do we actually have to do to increase our position size? And, um, you know, in, if I was to explain it in one single word, when it comes to, you know, how do you increase your single position size, that single word would be slowly, all right? So that would be very slowly. Uh, and the reality is most new traders do the exact opposite, all right? They do the exact opposite. Um, you know, uh, what we talk about is, you know, we'll see new traders, basically, you know, they 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 may have a little bit of a, a streak, okay, a streak of success. Maybe they have a couple of months of, you know, winning trades, okay. They're in the, if they've been in the right place at the right time, they're trading well, they're generating, you know, good returns, and then, you know, they're they're very very happy. And what happens is is their behaviour changes because, you know, they, you know, they they see a little bit of their success in front of them. They start to believe their own myth. They start to believe that you know that that you know that they are they're going to be the the next George Soros or whoever, next Paul Tudor Jones, all right? Because they've had a few months of winning success, and what happens is they they now want to leverage up. Okay, they now want to scale up their trading business, and so you know they might have been trading. They may have been trading, let's say, in percentage wise. They may have only been trading maybe 0.1 of a percent, or maybe 0.2 of a percent. Maybe they've just been trading a the smallest micro lots that they can make. Maybe they've been trading at, let's say, you know, one one euro a point. Okay. And so what happens is that, you know, they 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 realize that they want to scale up their business. Now they're having a little bit of success. You know, and that is driven by external factors, which we'll talk a little bit more on the uh, the, the next slide. But when it comes to increasing position size, you want to move slowly. Okay. Move slowly like a like a big tortoise. Okay. Uh, and I'll I'll explain more about why. As I say, you know, uh, most traders will do the exact opposite. They they have some small success, okay, with their small account, and that's fabulous. You know, they've they've you know they've achieved a level of consistency, and it's absolutely fantastic. And then I'll see traders, and they will scale up their position size, maybe tenfold or twentyfold. So if you just use simple, you know, hypothetical maths, you know, uh, you know that that person might be. I see them. You know, they might have been trading at, let's say, you know, uh, one dollar, right? One dollar a, a pip. Okay, one dollar. You know, effectively, you know, what many people might have seen is like maybe a, a you know the equivalent of a of a uh, of a mini lot. Okay, just about one dollar a pip, uh, and they have some experience. You know, I said they have some success. They do it for you know a couple of months. They get a little bit of success. They start to get a little bit of confidence, a little bit of self belief. They start feeling excited and what happens is that you know they will scale up their position size as i said 10 or 20 fold more often than not due to external reasons and what do i mean by that what i mean is that you know they are you know they're, they're, they're bored in their day job or they don't like their day job and they you know they want to, an opportunity to trade full time and, and to get away from their job or you know they are you know they've they've had a, a challenging lifestyle okay and then you know they want you know a, you know a better house a better car they want holidays okay they want nice things okay all the kind of external drivers that have that maybe they have a, maybe they have a partner and maybe they want to you know maybe they want their partner to to basically to be able to either you know to spoil their partner maybe even ask their partner not to 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 work to look after their children or to make you know make their home better for everybody so you know there's lots of reasons but they are generally normally external reasons all right external reasons to that individual trader and those external reasons can actually have an impact upon what those traders do and so as i say that trader who's been chipping along quite nicely, just building up confidence, building up track record, doing the right things, trading it, let's say, you know, in the position size of, of $1 a point overnight, you know, they suddenly jump to trading at $10 a point or $20 a point, okay? 
And, you know, I have to say that normally that ends very badly. Okay. That ends because mentally you're, you're used to, to seeing, you know, wins and losses at, at a particular sort of size, a particular scale. And what can happen is if you go from trading like at $1 a point to trading at $20 a point, well, when you have those losing trades, you know, you're, you're now losing in one trade what you were, you know, what you might lose over, over a month, you might lose in a, in one single trade. And, and once that happens, okay, especially if you're a private trader trading a small account that is your own capital, well, invariably that can, that can give you a little bit of a, uh, you know, a little bit of a, um, uh, you know, a little bit of a, a, a smack to your mental health. Okay. It can burnish the mental health, not in a good way. Uh, and, and invariably that what happens is then that leads to um, revenge trading. Okay. That leads to revenge trading people wanting to try and claw back their, uh, their, uh, uh, their trading funds because invariably they're experiencing loss aversion bias. And so, as I said, it usually ends badly, very badly when the, when people do that. So if you have, um, you know, if you've considered doing that, maybe you've done that already. Okay. Maybe, you know, you can sort of, you know, through sucking teeth, you can remember when you did that yourself uh, and actually how painful that could be. All right. That's absolutely fine. As I said, none of us are perfect. We're all humans okay we're all trying to um just make the uh the sort of the best of our journey you know sort of you know and uh and be the uh the, the best trader that we possibly can be uh, and so you know doing that okay uh, if you haven't done that already well then my suggestion is you know just take a note from paul today and say you know if you even find yourself considering do that well then basically you know stop yourself okay that in itself is a trigger that you are perhaps not ready to increase your position size and that invariably what will happen is you'll end up going from hero to zero you'll have as I said you'll have had a few good months uh, which could be undone in a in a single week okay of a few trades when you when you try to do that on a sort of you know financial size so so please uh please make sure you uh, you you don't do that um so you know what what can we do well um you know in terms of increased position size um, what i would normally talk about is that this there's increasing percentage size uh, and there's increasing financial size so we talked a little bit in a way about financial size there are people going from trading the equivalent of you know one dollar you know one mi mini lot or one micro lot to trying to trade two three four five full lots okay it's, it's too big a leap okay it's too big a leap in in one like that you know just set yourself up for a bit of a bit of trouble Regardless of you know whether you're increasing size in terms of percentages or financial, it, it is important to maintain risk control. If it is you're growing in terms of percentage size, in terms of the percent that you risk on a trade, remember what we said earlier: you should never be risking more than one percent per trade, right? And and I still I stand by that. Okay, sometimes people want to increase it and think, well, do you know what, Paul? You know, I've I've had a couple of good months of trading. I'm I'm going to leap from risking one percent to five percent or to ten percent, etc. And the reality, once again that rarely ends well. What I'd be saying is that, you know, if, if you have started trading, you know, minimum size, so you know, maybe you've even just been trading 0.1 of a percent, you know, a tenth of a percent, okay, or 0.2, et cetera. If you are looking to, to increase, well, then you you slowly build yourself up to 1%, all right? You don't, you don't just jump from trading 0.2 percent of uh of your you know capital risk to jumping to one percent you do it slowly okay as I said in one word you just do it slowly you go from maybe 0.1 percent to 0.2 to 0.3 to 0.5 maybe you know to 0.75 all right you slowly build yourself up to one percent and the important thing is is that you do it off the back of good trade data and what i mean by that is you don't just scale up and, and increase your position size because you've had three or four winning trades, right? And, you know, it should be at least a couple of months of just being able to demonstrate that, you know, you've been consistently successful on a week by week basis, you know, for, you know, eight, you know, normally like eight to 12 weeks, you know, even if like, even if you're an intraday trader, you know, like one quarter, you know, is, uh, is good and it is, um, it is solid. And as I say, slowly increase your position size by small increments, right? Increase by no more than 0.1 or 0.2 of a percent okay as this is as I said this is if you're looking at it as a as an increase in percentage size rather than just pure capital size financial size uh, and that's what i suggest is you know don't do it on a trade by trade basis do it on a you know week by week or a month by month basis so um you know what you can normally have is you can normally have dynamic or static um uh 
position sizing. Um, and what I generally suggest is, especially for intraday trading, if you're trading short time frames, is that you have static position sizing. What do I mean by that? That means is that for either that week or that month ahead, you know, you establish what, let's say, what one percent of your um, of excuse me of your capital is. And, and that is your capital risk for that month or, you know, for that week or for that month. And then at the, the either the weekend or the month end, you reassess based upon the equity within your, uh, the capital within your uh, account. Uh, and that's the way I do it. Some people try to increase trade by trade uh, and invariably once again, okay, that is just, it's, it's too much too fast uh, and it generally tends to end poorly for, um, for those particular traders. So, you know, it is you, you increase smallly by small increments based off the back of good trade data, no more than like 0.1%, 0.2%. You're just very small. Okay. And I appreciate that that can be a bit challenging for people. They might be a little bit, you know, a little bit, you know, they want to see big moves. But this is from years of actually having done it myself, from actually having coach traders, from actually seen and spoken and interacted with lots of traders, is that small and slow is the, uh, is the way we want to, to, to be working. So, yeah, as I said, when people do it on a financial size and, they, and people go from trading $1 a point to, to $10 to $20 a point overnight, it is too big of a jump, all right? It's too big of a jump. It generally tends to call, cause psychological problems for uh, for most traders, right? Because invariably what it happens is it's, uh, you know, it's just it's just too big a jump. Remember, it's, the, it's that gap between expectation and reality. And in that gap is where all of your uh, all of your psychological challenges sort of, you know, will, will pour themselves in. So it is slow and steady, all right? That when you do it too big a jump, it causes psychological problems, which results in in kind of bad trading, giving back giving back the profit. So you know, as I said, I've seen traders who've done really well for three months and then give that all back in a week because then very they've just jumped to far too um, big a uh, position size. Okay, and I've got some real I've got some real interesting tales to tell you one day. Um, uh, you know about you know traders that I've seen uh, do that. So um, just to to finish up, all right. Uh, Final point is, you know, there is no such thing as perfection in trading. Never let anybody tell you there is. What you'll find is that, you know, uh, when it comes to increasing position size, many want to be the hair, all right? Many want to be there. They, you know, they want to do everything really fast. But, but you know, when it comes to that sort of old fable of the, you know, the hair bear, the tortoise, when it comes to increasing position size, it's all about being the tortoise. It's all about being slow and steady, okay, and small increments. This is not really a race, right? You know, sometimes, as I said, people think that they have to increase really fast. But normally, as I said, that is because of external drivers, all right, external drivers that they are bringing to their trading. The market doesn't know or care about your external drivers. It's about you growing at your own pace pace slow and steady building confidence building self-belief and it's better to trade at a smaller level that you are comfortable at rather than push into bigger and bigger position sizes which you are uncomfortable in because invariably what will happen is you will make poor choices because your you know your mind will have been scrambled from actually from going from you know to to, to too big a um, position there will be there will be and also within that there will be levels okay that you will reach that invariably will also make you uh, stutter all right and think about it, and you need to take that on board um, so to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we've talked about, uh, you know, the, the, the price action series, which is really all about looking for price action triggers at significant price levels, prices or um, or zones. And that's what allows us to build a very simple price action trading plan. When it comes to position size, OK, and equity and accounts, as I said, lots of private traders experience similar challenges that their accounts are a bit small. Uh, and because of the change in regulations, that that has stifled them a little bit. And then as well as that, a lot of those new traders, they are underskilled and overconfident. And that is quite a dangerous, um, that's quite a dangerous, heady mix. And I said, it leaves traders trying to chase the, uh, the, the money or feel like they have to hit a home run on every trade. Uh, and therefore, they end up chasing the tail as they as they chase what they believe will be the next winning strategy for them. That leads to being sort of kind of overwhelmed, a bit of analysis paralysis. You know, and so, you know, in Ways that the sort of three ways we talked about in terms of how you can succeed in that or overcome those challenges. You know, one of them is about increasing position size. 
but increasing position size must be done very slowly. Okay. If you want it to be consistent and successful, you need to do it slow. You cannot jump, you know, from, from, as I said, from trading $1 a point to $20 a point. Okay. Well, you can, but the, the, the psychological challenges it will cause you mean that you will have difficulties doing so. It is really literally slow and steady and you're about being consistent. The thing is though, you know, that, you know, once that happens, that, that actually, even just doing it slow and steady, that, that, growth can compound itself quite quickly. It can be surprising after about, a, you know, six months to a year of doing that. So you will start to see some really interesting, um, uh, you know, interesting feedback, but it has been doing it slow and steady for that first sort of six to nine months that, um, that is really, that's really key and uh, important. So uh, before we, uh, uh, before we, uh, finish up okay just remember the next session uh wednesday 5th of july on our price action trading guide what we're going to talk about is how to improve your price action trading plan part two so um uh, a few weeks ago we looked at the first part of that the second part of okay, play will be next week and um, we will talk about well you know what do we cover in part one uh, how do we improve our price action trading plan what is the best way for us to move forward as a price action trading plan so there'll be lots there for us to cover lots of you to take away so ensure that basically that is you know two o'clock next uh, wednesday 5th of july check your inbox for the webinar link uh, or head over to the uh, website to, to to ensure that you can sign up um for the session if you've got any questions or comments then by all means okay you can uh, contact us there on the on the details there um, after this session you'll get a very quick feedback form really appreciate if you just take a couple of moments or if there are topics that you would like to see me cover for you in future you can you know sort of just uh, utilize the email address there okay and comment there uh, and we'll happily take that on uh type that on board for you okay so um, i'm just looking at the time unfortunately we've uh, run a little bit out of time to go to uh, to look at the live markets um uh this week but um we'll do this but you know Hopefully that has just started to give you a little bit of an insight into what you need to consider if you are looking to, you know, if you're trading with a small account and looking to increase your account size. And how do I, how do you do that in terms of increasing your position size? You do it very slowly, all right, and you do it in small increments. You don't sort of just try and, you just don't try and go for, you know, for the, for the huge big overnight move because, in all the experience that I've seen with traders, all right, down the years, is that it it, it rarely ends well, ladies and gentlemen. All right, it, you know, it, it it normally it normally sort of you know blows up in the face, okay, not in a good way, all right, in a in a trading way. It has to be just slow and steady, okay, just slow, steady, all right. Don't don't overwhelm yourself. Don't don't basically put too much stress and pressure on your shoulders because invariably that generally tends to lead to uh, to poor trading decisions. So as I said, I hope that's just giving you a bit of insight what you've got to think about, what you've got to take on board uh, in terms of how you can uh, go about doing it. Um, as always, I wish you the very best of success in your own trading, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have a fabulous trading week uh, and I look forward to uh, speaking to you next Wednesday, 5th of July, uh, when we will talk about the sort of, you know, uh, improving and refining our price action trading plan. So I hope you will join us then. Have a great trading week and I'll speak to you soon. Cheers, everybody. Thanks.